Hey guys, it's Julian, and today I'm gonna be showing you how to make music like Will RSK. As usual, you can get the full project file, samples, MIDI, presets, all of that from this video right at the top of the description. And if you're a patron on my Patreon, check there because it's already available. And yeah, let's dive in. So, this is the loop from the intro. We're at 122 BPM, kind of like a more housey tempo, even though this isn't necessarily a housey beat. But the first sound we have here is the lead, which sounds like this. So yeah, the mini looks like this. It's actually really simple. If you look at this, it's literally just doing like this F major chord sort of thing. But then I've just moved this down, the root note down to E, and then here it goes back up to F. But if you look at this, you can see it's F, A, C. Literally just root note, major third, fifth. And then like I said, there's also this E in here. So that would be the major seventh, which is just one note down from the root note. So really simple stuff. It's all about just kind of writing something like this that has this interesting rhythm where like the pattern kind of restarts on the two here rather than just if it was just like this you know that's super straightforward but then when you put it here it gets really interesting rhythmically and then also you can see there's some extra notes over here like we have a high E we have uh yeah, so really simple MIDI. It's more just about having like this interesting rhythm and having it kind of like bounce off of everything else that's happening in the track. For the sound with this one, this is made with wavetable. So you can see what this is. It's actually just two saw waves, really simple here. And then those are just going into this amp envelope, which is set like this. And that's pretty much it. I have the low pass here being automated. You can see it's just like a really subtle thing at the end there. So this is something I'll show you more with this green delay in a second as well. But something I noticed with this music is it's not just about the synth patch. It's also kind of about how the synth patch is moving and changing over time and stuff. And so like just having this little automation you can see actually the grain delay does it in the exact same spot if we put those side by side you can see like it kind of disappears a little bit toward the end and then it comes back that's what that low pass automation is doing but yeah really simple synth patch like I said it's really just like you just want to get some nice fat saw waves coming out of the synth without too much stuff in the way of just getting like that clean powerful sound after that I have this grain delay so that kind of like glitchy sound that you hear is actually not my sound, ca sound card glitching out it is this grain delay here's without this And then with it, so you can hear this is actually doing quite a bit. The thing with this is like, you can still hear the original note, like, you know, that like punchy is still in there. It just has now some more like, kind of color on top. And yeah, this is a really great way to add some character to your synths. You know, you don't want it, you don't always want it to just be like the plain dry synth with a little bit of reverb. Sometimes it needs to have a bit more texture and a bit more character. And that's what this is doing. So with this one, the key is that it's just like a really fast time. It's at 40 milliseconds. And then I have this random pitch on as well, which is not doing a whole lot. If we turn that way up, you know, that's when you actually start getting notes that are out of key. But with the place that it's at now, it just kind of adds this detail. Which is really nice. And then we get the feedback there. The spray and the frequency knobs are pretty much like what's creating this. And yeah, and then I just have that dry wet automation to kind of wash it out even more. And then it comes back to normal right at the end of eight bars. Again, it's a really nice way to just bring the sound to life and make it not just be like just this flat synth that sounds the same the whole way through. Then we just have a bit of reverb on the sound, you know, just give it some more space. A bit of drum bus as well to make it fat and make it really hit hard, you know. This is important because you want this to really be like, I'm almost percussive, you know, like it's... Like it's very plucky like that and so the drum bus can really help to bring that out and make it so it doesn't get buried in the mix. Then we have a compressor side chaining this. So I have basically what's happening here is as you can hear this is being side chained. Pretty much everything that is melodic here is being side chained. So if you notice 
it only ducks every two bars. So what's happening here is this isn't actually being sidechained to the kick. You know, usually you would sidechain everything to your kick. But as you can hear, the kick pattern is pretty busy. So what I did is I just took the kick and then we have this one down here. It's super quiet and then it's being muted. But then what's happening is that's just playing every two bars and then I have this being side chained to that. So, you know, it gives you that side chain sound without being at the mercy of the kick pattern because if we side chain this to the kick, it's just going to be too much. But just that quick kind of duck at the start of every two bars. That's what that's doing. And then finally, I just have this EQ8 just high passing this, cutting out the lows, making sure it's not going to get in the way of the bass. And that's it for the lead. The next sound here is the pad. Here's the video on that. This is playing actually pretty similar stuff to what I showed you with the lead. So it's the same sort of like F major. You could also look at it as A minor. You know, it's like this F and E could either be the root note and the minor and the major seventh, or it could be the the fifth and then that one note up from the fifth. That gives you kind of some tension when you're in a minor key. But yeah, so it's a really simple pad, you know, it's just stuff that's gonna fit really nicely with the bass line and the chord progression. Just kind of adding some extra musical stuff. And it's like, you know, really playing with the small changes too. Like, really the main thing that's happening here is just this F is going down to E. I'm not adding in a bunch of extra notes on the second chord. I'm not like, you know, really beefing it up and doing a whole bunch of stuff. It's just a quick little change from one note down to one note down but it gives you it's very very powerful like i feel like the smaller the changes the more powerful it is in your chord progression and then just adding the c at the end as well you know just kind of helps to resolve the progression for the sound with this one this is also made with wavetables so this is just two saw waves here actually kind of similar to the lead patch if you think about it i've got this low pass here you can see that just automates just like with the lead just making it kind of go down and then it builds back up to when we get back to the start of the pattern. Then we just have the amp envelope set like that. And yeah, that's really it. I noticed this just, you just really want like a nice, powerful saw wave that's going to fill out that mid-range. It's not going to be like a whole bunch of unison and, you know, oscillators being pitched across all different octaves. It's just a nice, fat saw wave pad. I've got that going through a bit of chorus, a bit of reverb as well. Those are both giving it some space. We have some drum bus, which is beefing it up and really helping to like make it sound full. Then we have a compressor side chaining it to that side chain at the bottom, as well as this EQ8 here cutting out the lows. You can see I cut out a lot more on this one than I did on the lead, because this one, you really just want it in the mid-range. And yeah, that's it for the pad. From there we have the bass. So pretty simple chord progression. I think a really big hallmark of this style is like almost like these big anthemic, more like pop leaning chord progressions to be honest. Like this is a lot more like a pop chord progression to me than it is like an electronic or like house chord progression, you know? But it's just this big like thing. We start on F and then it jumps up to D. So you get that nice kind of like respace thing happening where you hear it get really fast. And then we just go down to C. And then that G at the end really helps to resolve it because when you're hearing this, like after you've heard these three notes, we could just sit on the C, but just hearing that G, which is so close to the F, it's like, it kind of tells your brain like, oh, like I really want this to hit back on that F. And it's a really smooth way of resolving the progression. And yeah, and then for the sound with this one, it's two layers. So we have a mid bass and we have a sub bass. So for the mid bass, this is made with wavetable. We have two saw waves again, and then it's literally just two saw waves, the amp envelope set like that. And then I have this unison. So the unison is really helping to give it that big re sound. 
that's what's creating the detail. And you can see I actually have quite a bit of that. Then we just have a high pass filter to cut out the lows and make sure that this isn't going to clash with the sub. And then for the sub, it's just this simple FM sound where you can see it's just a sine wave with a little bit of FM from the second sine wave here. Just kind of like adds a little bit more harmonic content which helps kind of glue it with the Reese bass and make it sound like one. You know, if you just use a sine wave side by side with a Reese, it's not really going to sound like one bass. It's going to sound like you have a sine wave, there's a bunch of missing harmonics, and then there's this mid-range bass. But this way, we're kind of filling out the harmonics and like just making it feel really big and full. And it sounds complex, but it's really simple if you think about it. It's basically just like, if we have just a sine wave side by side with the re space, you have harmonics here, you know, that are very powerful, and then you have harmonics maybe here that are really powerful, but nothing in between. And then adding this is just kind of filling in that space in between. That's all it's doing. Seems complex, but it's a complex thing that serves a very simple purpose. Then, those both are just going into a drum bus here, so that's just beefing it up even more. This is really like the glue too. If you have two basses like this, and you're trying to make them sound like one, saturation, especially like pretty hard saturation like I've got here, is going to really glue those together. Then we just have a compressor with a side chain, as well as this EQ here, which is cutting out some room at 100 hertz, just to make some room for the kick. And then that's it for the bass. And then after that, we have the kick, which sounds like this. So this is a pretty simple thing. The main thing about this kick, you can see, is just like this kind of, you know, sort of quick, fat kick. I've got it going through a bit of drum bus. The main thing here is the pattern. It's almost like a future garage pattern. Like if you listen to this with the drums. I feel like this style of drums, it's kind of like a combination between like burial future garage and then like more like up tempo breakbeat stuff, you know? So that was the idea with this kick pattern, you know, it's very sparse, and lots of 16th notes and 8th notes. You know, not just like doom, 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 like you would have in a house track. And then it's going through some drum bus. And then I have the kick and the bass in a group together, just a little bit of saturation. Here's without it. And then with it. As you can actually hear, it's making a very big difference in terms of gluing these together, like, when you don't have it, the low end, one, these both aren't quite as fat as they could be, so your track isn't going to be as powerful. But also, the low end just doesn't really feel as cohesive until you have this. Like, when you turn this on, then they really become one, and the low end really feels tight. So yeah, then we have the percussion. So we start with the snare. So this is made with two layers, it's the snare sample that I made, and this clap that I made. And then what's happening here is you put them together, you get the snare kind of in the mid-range, and that's more of like that, like that punchy kind of low mid-range sound. And then the clap is adding like that like crackiness to it, you know like that, to really give it the punch. And then you put them together and you get the best of both worlds. And I talk about this a lot, but this is the thing. It's like, you know, with layering like this, if you have two sounds that complement each other, you notice there's no EQ, there's no, like, special compression or anything like that. It's literally just two sounds that are playing side by side into some drum bus here. If you have two sounds that really complement each other, you don't really have to do too much. Like, it's just about putting them together because one is doing one thing, one is doing the other, and then you put them together and you get a really full sound. And yeah, like I said, then it's just going through a bit of drum bus. Then we have these percussions. So what these are is, it's these three little percussion sounds that I had here. I'll play these for you. And they're in a drum rack. I just have them playing like this. Pretty busy pattern. Like, obviously, it's playing really frequently. But then what's happening here is it's going through a bandpass filter. So then we kind of have it like fading in and out so that it's not just happening at all times. And yeah, this is a really great way to add some kind of like moving and changing percussion to the background of your track because it's really, like it's not just about the fact that like it plays and then you don't hear it for a while. It's kind of just playing constantly, but then it's just fading in and out with the band pass because we have an LFO on there. 
And you can hear that, like in some parts you're not even hearing this, but then when it does come in, it's like a very nice way to have some moving and changing percussion. Then we have these hi-hats. So these are all the sort of main hi-hats, like we have the actual main hi-hat here. And then we have these three other ones. And yeah, so those are just, you know, giving the whole... Pretty much everything you hear in terms of hi-hats is happening here. So yeah, it's just like having that main one and then having some that are a little bit quieter underneath it. And then the final percussion layer here is this 808 hi-hat. So this is filling in that extra space because if I turn this off, you can hear those hi-hats I just showed you a second ago. There's kind of something missing. In terms of like just the flow because there's not something that's just going like tick, 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 the whole way through. So that's what this is doing. And you'll notice it kind of goes back to what I was saying. It's like this is a very bright high-end bass sound. And then these are all mostly in the mid-range. So then you put them together. And there's a lot happening there. To really add a lot of energy and intensity to the track. You know, the energy of a track is really in the high end. Like, the groove is in the low end. The groove is the kick and the bass happening together. The energy is happening from the high end. High frequencies just are more hype. Like, that's why when you turn a low-pass filter down on a sound, it feels more chill, and when you turn it up, it feels really alive and energetic. So, this is really just, like, filling all of that out in the high end. And then on the group of the percussion, we just have a bit of drum bus and a bit of a high-pass slash high-end boost. Here's without these. And then with them, so... Yeah, you can hear, you know, the drum bus just really fattens these up, kind of puts them all in the same place. This really helps, like, if you're having a hard time getting your percussion to really feel like it's in the same place, try just putting it through some saturation like this. It's a really simple way to do that. It also makes everything a lot fatter and makes it fit in the mix a lot better. And then this is just cutting out the lows, making sure that nothing's going to get in the way of the bass, and then boosting the highs to kind of bring out that sharpness a bit. And yeah! That is it for this project file, and that is also going to be it for this video, guys. So, as always, I hope you enjoyed. Make sure to like this video as well as subscribe, and let me know what you think of this video in the comments. Like I said in the beginning, you can get the full project file, samples, MIDI, presets, all of that stuff from this video right at the top of the description. And if you're a patron on my Patreon, check there because it's already available. It's a great way to support me, guys, if you've been enjoying these videos. And yeah, thank you so much, everybody, and I will see you tomorrow with another video.